Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Monday, November 11th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in the middle of November. Keep calm. It's boom time. Let's start off by thanking all of the veterans out there keeping our country free. Denver sees the 11th largest snowstorm on record ever. In some areas of Colorado, the snow that fell was equivalent to about half of the average snow for the entire winter. Yeah, it's true. Denver just saw its 11th largest snowstorm since record keeping began in 1882, according to the National Weather Service. From Tuesday through Saturday, a storm created snowfalls ranging from 20 inches in Denver to 40 inches in areas like Limon. It was, in fact, the third largest November snowstorm on record for Denver and the largest November so snowstorm since 1983 when 21 inches of snow fell in Denver from November 26th to the 27th. And we've got more snow on the way. A new storm with rain and snow is already eyeing the Northwest. The second of a storm duo will bring drenching rain and mountain snow to the Northwest from Tuesday night to Thursday. Indirect effects from the storm will lead to gusty winds in Southern California and the last time that happened, bad things occurred. Here is the exclusive AccuWeather forecast for Tuesday. And you can see uh, this atmospheric river is going to bring heavy rain to the coast. It'll be chilly inland with a mix of rain and snow showers for the higher elevations. We'll have the full forecast and the GFS model in just a moment. But first, do you guys know about the Great Blue Norther of November 11th? 1911 well today is the day and it is the anniversary of a cold snap known as the great blue northern of 11 11 11 now this weather event affected the central u.s many cities broke record highs that day going into the 70s and 80s early in the afternoon but by nightfall cities were dealing with temperatures in the teens and single digits on the Fahrenheit scale. This is the only day in many Midwest cities where not only were their record highs broken, but record lows on the same day. Some cities experienced tornadoes on Saturday and a blizzard on Sunday. A blizzard even occurred within one hour after an F4 tornado hit Rock County, Wisconsin. The front produced severe weather and tornadoes across the upper mid Mississippi Valley and a blizzard in Ohio and the windy conditions upon the front passage caused a dust storm in Oklahoma. Alongside the dramatic temperature swings, the cold front brought a destructive tornado outbreak in parts of the Midwest and at least th 13 tornadoes touched down across five states as the system moved through, resulting in 13 fatalities. Hundreds of structures were destroyed by the storms and many areas had to conduct search and rescue missions amidst blizzard conditions. Thomas P. Grazulis stated in 1990 that this outbreak was one of the worst on record in November for the North Central States. And it has a lot to do with the breakdown of the jet stream and the fact that back in 1911, we were in the centennial minimum with increased cosmic rays and weakened magnetosphere and the jet stream becomes more meridional than zonal, where you can bring Arctic air all the way down towards the equator and equatorial air all the way up towards the Arctic. Grand solar minimum much? We are tracking a new area for possible tropical development in the Caribbean Sea. Just a 40% chance now, and not for several days. So we'll keep a close eye on it for you. And here's the full forecast. Cold fronts for western and eastern U.S. early this week. A cold front will work across the eastern U.S. through Monday with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms before a broad high pressure brings quiet weather by Tuesday. Across the western U.S., a cold front will shift across the region through Tuesday 
and an atmospheric river following the front will bring heavy coastal rain and high elevation snowfall for portions of the northwest. A quick look over at the GFS model and we'll walk that system through. In the next three hours, you can see snow is going to fall all the way down the Sierra Crest and throughout the west on Tuesday into Wednesday morning. Those are the totals. Some light snow for the northeast as well. So let's walk through Wednesday into Thursday morning. More snow and a second wave for the Pacific Northwest. And as we enter next weekend, more snow for the west. And then this baby. This storm develops just about a week out from now and could be quite significant for many states. In fact, the first snow for many. And it's looking very Christmas-like in Europe as well. Take a look at this forecast. By the end of November, all of Europe could be buried in the global warming goodness. Looks like Norway could be tilting with heavy coastal snow. And take a look at the Alps. Looks like they could be picking up to four feet of snow before December. The Saudi Arabian desert's first ever snowfall in some pictures here. We reported on this days ago when it occurred, but some good pictures coming out of Saudi Arabia's usually sun-baked deserts. They've been transformed into an unexpected winter scene in recent days as snow blanketed parts of the Al Jaf region in the northern Al Nufud desert. The rare event marks the first snowfall ever recorded in the region, an area traditionally known for its scorching heat and golden sand dunes. Footage shows snowflakes falling across the desert and settling on the sand. In one clip, a caravan of camels is seen walking across a thin layer of ice that is formed on the ground, as you see here. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Very low level activity worldwide. An interesting low, small quake in eastern Australia, but nothing at all to be worried about. In a few days... With a coronal hole stream coming to Earth, we may have a seismic uptick starting Wednesday. We're a Y Volcano News. Semadu, who knew? Now you do 15,000 foot blast today. Canelon on the list with a 10,000 foot puff. Popo, puffing and passing. Etna, the eruption is decreasing today. And Fuego to 15. Nevada de Cruz, 20,000 foot blast. Canelon, short periods of ash emission continue. And Canelon erupting to 10,000 feet there in the latest report. Lee Toby continuing, but at lower levels here, a 13,000 foot puff today. Popo on the list, Karimshkai, 12,000 foot. Raventador, 14,000 foot blast. Abankaya, steam emission. Fuego to 15,000 foot. Santa Guito to 14,000 foot. Ibu, 8,000 foot blast. Lee to 16, a slight increase there. Nevado de Cruz, volcanic ash observed, Kanimsky to 8, Semeru to 14. And Etna, activity is decreasing on the mountain, wrapping up worldwide volcano news for the day. A quick look at space weather shows a complete shutdown of all flaring, very low level sea activity. Some sunspots facing Earth now, but not a very active sun. This is after several M flares and a near X flare over the last 48 hours. None of them producing coronal mass ejections headed our way. No geomagnetic storms forecast. All quiet on the three-day geomagnetic front. There was a plasma filament in the southern hemisphere that detached over a long period today. Uh, and it has lifted off. The filament eruption in the southern hemisphere did, in fact, produce a coronal mass ejection. But based on the location of the event, the plasma cloud appears to be traveling well south of the Sun-Earth line. And there you can see that coronal mass ejection from the filament lifting off the sun. Scientists propose shocking new theory for the origin of the moon. And this is an origin of the moon boom. For nearly 40 years, scientists have generally agreed that Earth's moon formed from debris after a Mars-sized object slammed into our young planet. However, new research suggests a different possibility. Our moon may have been captured from space, originally paired with another rocky object before Earth's gravity pulled it into our orbit. It could explain a few things. 
The theory helps address some puzzling aspects of the moon's orbit that are difficult to explain with the traditional collision theory. Moreover, the traditional belief doesn't account for certain chemical signatures found in moon rocks brought back by Apollo astronauts. Now, someone moved the UK's oldest satellite, and it's a ticking time bomb. The United Kingdom's oldest satellite mysteriously relocated itself, and no one knows why or who moved it. Because of the satellite's present condition, some also consider it to be a ticking time bomb that could riddle space with debris leading to the Kessler syndrome. And if you don't know what that is, Leah, uh, Magnetic Reversal News got a strike, and we won't be able to post there till next weekend. But we did put up the radio show on Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Saturday. The Kessler Syndrome and the Space Junk Problem. Go check it out. Now, a good question. How fast can the wind really go? The fastest speed on record is revealed in this article. The World Meteorological Organization meticulously tracks and verifies weather records worldwide. According to their official records, the fastest wind gust ever recorded on Earth reached an astonishing 407 kilometers per hour or 253 miles per hour. This phenomenal wind speed was measured on April 10th, 1996 during a tropical cyclone that struck Barrow Island off the coast of Western Australia. So now you've got the facts. Use them wisely. A fan of the channel sent me a blog post of his called A Yoga in Space. Yoga on the Space Station. There's space for awareness in space. If this is something that interests you, it will be linked below. And if you didn't know, Oppenheimer Ranch Project Swag Store has some new designs, including Al Gore and a Glacier. You can get it on a hoodie. You can get long sleeve magnetic excursion ongoing with Oppenheimer Ranch Project on the back. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole with Al Gore in a Glacier on the front. You can get a mug of Al Gore in a Glacier. You can get new Orp merch our emblem there on the front, all different sizes. These are all shut up out, get in your whole versions, hoodies, tanks, stickers, and more. Even a camping tin cup there. A shut up out, get in your whole ORP style cup. Support the channel and look sharp doing it. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share the video. We are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. And it's working. Our subscribership is picking up thanks to your help. Become a Patreon, support the work we do, and watch all of our podcasts in one place commercial free, or just get the merch and look cool. Be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. <laughs>